Going into Forspoken, I had two thoughts. The writing looked god-awful thanks to all of the memes, but the combat looked so fun and the movement looked extremely kinetic. And after nearly 20 hours with the game, it surprised me. For better or worse. I lived up to having a fun gameplay loop and somehow reminded me of Sonic Frontiers, so let's talk about it. If you don't know, Forspoken is an open world checklist type game. Freya is transported from our everyday life in New York to the land of Athia, and of course, she's the chosen one who has to save Athia. I'll go more into the writing later, but the characters themselves aren't great because of the cringy dialogue, but the world is actually quite good. While I don't think the mystery is on the same level of Horizon Zero Dawn, I loved unraveling the history of the world as I explored Athia, and that alone carried the story way further further than it had any right to do. Hands down, the best thing that Forspoken does is the combat and the movement system. The combat feels something like Ratchet & Clank, where you have a massive radial menu of abilities to swap between to absolutely destroy enemies. And from the get-go, it felt quite good. Yeah, my powers were quite weak, but the feedback from the dual sense really helped create a nice impact on the combat, and then the particle effects are just gorgeous. From there, it only gets better though, as with every main boss you defeat, you unlock a whole new set of abilities. And at the end, you have four types of magic, each with three main attacks and loads of sub attacks, and the end game combat is chaotic and looks excellent with all of these effects. After each boss, there was this wow moment of what my next movement ability would be, or what the next magic type will do. I was hooked on the combat because of the challenge system though. Each skill had a challenge that improves the skill, when completed, and I love doing these as it forced me to use some skills in specific ways rather than just spamming them. There are easily over 25 skills though, and I hated that you could only have 3 challenges going at the same time. It just made for some unnecessary tedium that plagued so many open world games including Forspoke. If you played Sonic Frontiers, then I think you'll understand the feeling of the movement in this game. No, there aren't rails to grind on randomly in the world, rather I mean just how it feels. 90% of the time, the movement is great and zipping around the world is so much fun especially with how the game drip feeds you new movement abilities, but then there's this 10% of the time where your grapple doesn't hook exactly where you want it to, or you bash off a wall, and to me this sort of stuff is more frustrating because they got so much right yet these little annoyances muddy the experience. I had a blast zooming around the world and it's especially great because you don't need to pick items up. If you walk over an item you pick them up, which is something loads of games in general don't do right. The core loop of exploring the world, killing enemies and clearing things off the map feels great. But then the open world fatigue sets in. The map is stupidly big. I beat the game and there's still so much of the map that I haven't even discovered, which makes me wonder why they made these parts of the map in the first place. And yeah, there might be cool stuff in these unexplored areas, but to get there just seems like busy work. And it's this and then the rest of the game's systems that fall flat for me. Leveling up skills is so much fun, but I didn't once have to engage with the gear or upgrade system because they practically made no difference. I almost beat the game with the first armor and nails that you get, and I didn't struggle once. And on a side note, having stats tied to your painted nails is a cool idea, especially since there's a lore reason for it. I hate the trend of gear having no bearing on your gameplay in these so-called open world RPGs. I want to be forced to use different armor because it offers better defense against a certain type of damage, but Forspoken's gear system just isn't implemented well. The game has all the trappings of an open world game. Enemy camps to clear out, statues to find, time trials to complete, and combat dungeons. It helps that the combat and movement are so fun, but if you're not in the mood for an open world game, then skip this. The writing starts out so cringy. Frey has some stupidly cheesy lines when getting mugged, and it set the tone of what the game would be. Hey, uh... Uh... Lisa! Lisa? Really? I thought she was Lisa. That's Chrissy! Huh. Well, in my defense, you don't really look like a Lisa. <laughs> you have this very British cuff that speaks to you throughout the game, and he's annoying, but I actually like these intentionally annoying characters in games. I did turn his chatter down to a minimum in the menu stuff. The writing never really improved with constant jokes about how Frey doesn't like running and things like that, but eventually, I actually came to like the cringe. No monsters here, huh? Are you hoping for a little exercise? <laughs> you really don't know me. This is a Japanese team making this game after all, and I think of all the cringe-inducing dialogue in Yakuza or Final Fantasy. I'm not gonna say I like the writing in this game as much as like Yakuza Like a Dragon or Final Fantasy VII Remake, but there was definitely a level of charm to the cringe. The visuals remind me of something FromSoft would make. Individual pieces don't look great, character models look a bit strange, hair has a weird shimmer to it, and some textures leave a bit to be desired, and at times the game can drop significant frames and become a bit blurry. But when you add up all these parts together, it looks amazing. Seriously, just look at some of these vistas and pictures I took. Zipping around these environments not only felt great, but looked the part too. Forspoken is what Ghostwire Tokyo should have been. A fun open world with great magical powers and a kinetic movement system. 
At most, it's like a seven and a half out of 10. And at full price, I would wait for a sale. I had plenty of fun, but a few things were nowhere near as good as they should have been. But I do think if Forspoken 2 was ever released and the game was a bit more refined, they really do have something fun on their hands here. It's a solid start to the year, so let's hope it's only up from here. I just went back to The Witcher 3 to see if I could finally get back into it. So subscribe to the channel and check that video out. I really appreciate your time, and I'll see you all on the next video.